In 1980, a Peranakan woman was honoured in Rocamador, France, as a nobler dame of the Grand Order de Rocamador du Diamant Noir, which translates to Black Diamond, the truffle, that most prized of French culinary treasures. The French love their truffles, but I could have been knighted twice that day because I was representing our Black Diamond, the Bois Cloa. As a Paranakan, the Bois Cloa is mystical to me. We hear its poison can only be removed by burying it in the earth. You have to soak it in water for about two to three days to soften the flesh. I'm going to dry this because now comes the difficult part to crack it. You have to be able to sort of get the point of least resistance, this part where it's attached to the tree. So it's like this and then you crack it. Okay, this is a very nice hole because it's big enough for the teaspoon to go in. Now you have to do the second part, you have to pound it till it's very fine. We like to sieve it. Some people don't. You just have to press it down. It's a lot of work. This was really in the days where people had nothing to do. No television, no iPhone. Traditionally, you mix it with minced pork with some fat and a bit of salt, a bit of sugar, just for flavour. I mix it into a firm paste and then we're going to stuff it. So this is nice. You may want a little mountain. A spice mix is called a rumpa. These are the spice ingredients. Starting with candle nut, which normally you have to wash to just get it a bit soft. The first thing that goes in is the candle nut because it's oily and it will bind the other spice ingredients together. Then you put the ingredients in order of hardness. 20 grams of galangal, and this is quite old. Next order of hardness would be the turmeric. Cut the chilli into smaller pieces. And then finally the blachan. I was always told at the end, add enough shallots to bind it. It wets the ingredients. My final trick, food process it to what? Seven eighths fineness. and then pound the remaining so that it looks as though you've pounded everything. And that's a rhythm, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. In this Bokloa Rumpa, the spice mix is not fine, it's semi-rough, it's very lovely. And today, white gloves. I have about four tablespoons of tamarind and about one litre of water. And then you actually squeeze it. You notice I added a bit of water first. You want to sort of dissolve, then you add the rest. Now this is lemongrass. Normally one and you're going to smash it, add it whole. This allows the aromas to be released. It's amazing that the bokola is known as the black diamond. Diamonds are formed out of carbon over many millions of years of formation with high heat and temperature. You have got to wait for volcanic eruptions to bring it up. Black diamonds are very alluring. They have the shine and the brilliance. So it gives a lot of character and elegance. So it takes about seven to eight minutes to really fry all the spices till the juices evaporate and every single grain is fried, otherwise it's boiled. At the end, it will exude the oil and you know it's done. I put the lemongrass and if I fry it a bit, it's nice. Strain tamarind water into here and the chicken should be already out from the fridge and it should be room temperature. So this is the salt and the added sugar and my bokla. Gravy will infuse into the bok clot. The bok clot will leach out as well to infuse the gravy. And just keep on boiling till it's cooked. It will take about half an hour. The spices have settled at the bottom. Once in a while, you stir just to make it evenly cooked. The skin is starting to break in the wing. It's actually cooked. I can turn it off already. A spicy dish is done when the oil rises to the top.
We are going to take this recipe beyond tradition by adapting this dish to make Buaklot fried rice. Let's see what goes into it. About 60 to 80 grams of the sieved Buaklot flesh, 600 grams of rice, and then I have about 200 grams of prawns, peeled already, and then the back cleaned, which I'm going to cut into small pieces. And the spice mix is a typical rempatite, which is dried chilies, which have been soaked for about half an hour, hot water. Candle nut, lachan. And shallot. I'm going to make the rice a bit interesting and put winged bean. And then I have dried prawns, which I'm going to soak in water for about two to four minutes and grind it semi-fine. I think that's done. I'm letting the wok get hot and then the oil enough to fry my dried prawns. So it should have this sizzle. Put it at the side. A bit more oil. So this is the spice mixture. Fry it for about five to six minutes. The spice mixture has exuded oil. And then now I'm going to add the prawns because I want the prawns to be a bit cooked before I put the rice in. But three quarters cooked, not fully cooked. And cook rice, overnight rice. The rice will plump up, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to cover the wok. It will steam and the rice grains will separate. I'll fry it a bit drier, leave it open. So I'm going to add now the bois cloire. So taste as you go along. Because you cannot remove a flavour, but you can add the flavour. I don't need any more salt and maybe some sugar. So at the end, I will add my wing bean. I want it semi-raw because it's nice, it's crunchy. My bois cloire fried rice is done. We are going to marry the black diamonds of East and West by shaving some black truffle over the rice. Sounds indulgent? You bet! Fresh truffles from Italy and France are flown weekly to Singapore from late November till March. These Italian black truffles come from the house of Mora in Piedmont, courtesy of Classic Fine Foods. The Bois Cloire, like the culture it represents, is a diamond that's very precious to us. It is a story that deserves to be celebrated, not only for its history, but also for its ability to morph and change. And that's the beauty of knowing and enjoying one's heritage. <laughs>